Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again that we could have this moments to study your word. There are moments in time because soon one day time will be no more mm. and we will go into eternity. Soon probation's doors will close. Mm. But until that time, Lord, grant us this moment that we can all sit down and study the Bible and rightly divide the word of truth. Mm. We ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit because he is the spirit of truth. He guides, he teaches, and he speaks. Lord, please help us to understand this. Now please abide with us and grant your spirit will give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In, uh, in the fear of thee, Lord, we ask thee, please grant us thy Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. 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 In the previous program, we were talking about this uh, deceptions, the greatest deception that will take place soon to, to happen is that Satan himself will appear as an angel of life, as Jesus himself. And we also mentioned that this is going to be also a plan to reinforce even more what is going to be coming uh, upon the earth as an overwhelming surprise as an, when, the, when the United States, uh, a nation that has been upholding religious freedom will uh, form the image of the beast and will establish religious law that can nothing to do with the Bible and the Bible alone. Tradition will be exalted. Tradition will be trying to be imposed. Now, I know, Pastor Barry, you had some other uh, uh, video that you like to, you know, bring in this program today to prove, as we have been done in previous program, that yes, this is right in <laughs> happening in our midst. And many people, maybe that hasn't, maybe they have heard about it, maybe they have talked about it, but they don't know too much, or they don't have a full understanding yes. of what is implicated, or what the things that we hear today and see today. I want to make sure that people understand that we are not. Sunday haters. No, of course you know, not. Uh, you know, some people get this idea that we are Sunday haters because we used to go to church on Sunday. All right? Right. I grew up that way. Welcome right? to my club. All right, so I, I want to make that very clear. Mm. The issue is truth. Mm -hmm. The Word of God tells us the seventh day is the Sabbath. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, when we didn't know that and we followed traditions of our families and our friends or what our parents taught us, that's all we knew. Mm. But the Bible says God winked at our ignorance, mm. but he calls all men back to his commandments, mm. all right? So this is why we're looking at this issue. God's word is still stands the test of time. Mm. He has not changed. Mm. Man changes. Mm. Religions can even change, but God will not change, mm. all right? And he says his law stands. He will not mm. alter his covenant. All right. But, but, but what we've seen, what we've been presenting is, mm -hmm. it's even more than just a keeping of a Sunday right. a traditional man. It's trying to be enforced. Reinforced, right. By law. That, that's, that's the solemn and the fearful warning that we read in the now, Bible. Now, I, I want to just one bring out one thing. What spirit is behind it? Because everybody yeah. believes this is the Holy Spirit. Right, yeah. And remember, go with me to Isaiah 14 from the Bible for a moment as, I, as we get bring up this point mm -hmm. about this spirit. Isaiah chapter 14. Let's look at verses 12, 13, and 14 together. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Mm -hmm. Remember, there was a war in heaven, and he got cast out. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. Isaiah is continuing on reminding him of his fall. And he says, How art thou fall from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground who did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation, the size of north. 
I will sin above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm -hmm. Now notice he said, I will sit. Where? In the congregation. Now let's stop for a moment. What does it mean for a created being, though he may be spiritual, spiritual represent a covering cherub, angel, mm -hmm. what does it mean for a created being to sit? What does it mean for a created being or a human being to want to sit in the, sit in the mount of God? Let's, look at, let's see what that means. Go me to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28, let's look at verses 1 and 2. Then it says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus said the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. First of all, this created being, in Lucifer's case, his heart was lifted up, remember? Mm -hmm. And now we got human beings or kings or rulers who also can have their hearts, what? Lifted up because of their mm -hmm. sinful condition. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. They're lifted up, and it says, And thou hast said, I am a God. Mm -hmm. I sit in the seat of God. Now here we find, um, here is a man, a leader or king of Tyrus, who has now exalted himself with the same spirit that Lucifer had in his rebellion in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now Lucifer sought to go against the throne of God. Can you tell me right quick, what is at the throne of God that, that, that Lucifer had to prevent, that stopped him? What was it that stopped him when he wanted to exalt himself above, the, above God and take over the throne? What was it that was standing in this way? There was something there. Look at I go me to Psalms. Uh, go me to Psalms 97 2. I want you to tell me because what's at the throne of God stopped him. Clouds and darkness are around about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. The word habitation means foundation. What is the foundation of God's throne? righteousness and judgment. Notice very carefully. What is righteousness? Can you read, go to Psalms 119, 172 for me? What is righteousness? Psalm 119, mm -hmm. 172 mm -hmm. says, My tongue shall speak of your word for all your commandments are righteousness. My tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are what? Righteousness. righteousness. Wait a minute. So all ten commandments are what? Righteousness. Mm -hmm meaning that God will never do away with righteousness. Mm -hmm. He will do away with sin. He will do away with wickedness. He will do away with evil, but he will not do away with righteousness. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is the foundation of his government. In fact, Psalms eleven seven says, the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. Mm -hmm. So this is the issue. But now notice a little closer. So all thy commandments are what? Right. Righteousness. righteousness. So what commandment stopped Lucifer when he said, I will be like the most high? First one. What, what the, the first commandment, it says what? Right. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm. Thou shalt not make an any graven image of any likeness of anything that's in heaven above, that's the earth beneath, or that's in the water under the earth. So let's stop for a moment. The commandments of God stood in the way of this angelic being becoming one to be like God. What is it that stood, now, okay, now what is else did it say one day? Now the first commandment stood in his way, isn't that right? Right. But what other commandment stood in his way? Because, now listen carefully, the Bible says he wanted to sit upon the mount of the congregation. What does the word congregation mean? Church. The, the word church. congregation means a church or yeah. an assembly, uh, assembly where people assemble. Right. Now what day did God set aside that he would have the whole universe assemble for worship? Except because the, the word congregation means a place of assembly, which is a sign. Mm -hmm. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 20, the Bible tells us what is his sign. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Look right. what the Bible says here. Moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths mm -hmm. to be a what? A sign between me and what? And between me and them that they may know that I am the Lord that what? Sanctify them. Mm -hmm. Read verse so 20. So it's a message 20. of grace. Because it's coming from the Lord. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's, okay. it's a message of grace, but the idea here, what be verse 20 for me? And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So that's, so notice very carefully, the congregation, he said, I will sit upon the mount of congregation. Congregation means a place of assembly or a church, mm -hmm. but it's the, for the worship of God. Right. And the sign that God had for his worship was the seventh day Sabbath. Right. So when Lucifer got cast out of heaven, he decided he would set up his sign, mm. a spurious Sabbath, mm. in the place of God's seventh-day Sabbath. Mm. Okay? And then he says that he's going to get all the world 
to worship him through his deceptive to his deception, because the Bible says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. Mm. But then the Bible says the devil deceiveth the whole world, right. all right? Mm. He tells you all this power will I give you if you bow down and what? Now, what's his last issue? In the last temptation of Christ, what was the issue? Worship. What did it say? All these kingdoms will I give thee mm. if thou wilt bow down and what? And worship. And worship me. So the final temptation of Jesus is over worship. The final temptation that will come over all the world will be over worship. To every human being. And the issue will be over the Sabbath and the spurious Sunday. Now, why is this important to us? Because the Bible is making it clear that this is the issue that we're going to face. But now question is, is, is that right? We talked about this sun worship. God warned in the Old Testament not to worship the heavenly, the heavenly bodies of the sun or the moon or the stars. Mm -hmm. he, war he warned Israel not to worship idolatry. Mm -hmm. He called it an abomination. Isn't that what he called it? Isn't that what he called it? That's right. Take okay. Care. Okay. Take so, but now here we are in the last days of earth's history. And here we are talking about Sabbath and Sunday and, and, and all these other things. And people think that we're still off the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Does, is anything about Sunday in the air? In the, is anything about the, the issue of Sunday observance in the air? Or we, are we just making it up? The Bible has warned us not to worship Baal. And sun worship is no more than the worship of Baal. And let me say this to you. Most people, part of secret societies and other places, know that the sun worship is the oldest worship on this planet. But the older worship than sun worship that's on this planet is the worship of the Sabbath. It is older than sun worship because it was the original worship that God had made for the whole human race. Not only, not only it, it, that, that will even be extended to the new earth and the new heaven. Can you read? Because I, I know we want to present yes, yes, some video, to, yeah. but, but I would like to we hold to, yes, that, yeah. uh, you know, in a mm -hmm. few minutes, uh, a couple of minutes. Can, can you read uh, Isaiah 65, please? It says 6, 22. In 23, because the seventh day Sabbath was not only from the creation, it, it will go from creation to the new creation. Yes. Look what it says. Read it, please. For as six the new six, heavens and the 22, new earth, read it. which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another mm -hmm. and from one Sabbath to another mm -hmm. shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So now, wait a minute now. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. no, no, you go ahead. Wait a minute now. Now he said, read that again. Oh, the, the first part. The I first believe, part yeah. as the new heavens and yeah. the new okay, earth. Okay, stop right there. Isaiah is prophesying that God's going to make a new heaven and new earth. Mm, that's right. All right. But now my question is, book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, mm. also says the same thing that Isaiah foretold. That's yeah. right. Look at Revelation chapter 21. Now I want you to remember, what's going to be in the new heaven and earth? Watch carefully. And he says, now Revelation 21 says once, put it this way. And I saw a what? New, new heaven, heaven and a new earth. Now, wait a minute. Did, when, isn't that what Isaiah just said? Yes. It yeah. says, for the first heaven and the first earth We're that Isaiah away. and we ourselves have been living under were what? Passed, passed away, away mm -hmm. and there was no more sea. Mm -hmm. Now, John, now wait a minute. He saw what? New heaven and new mm -hmm. earth. earth. Can you All right, hold what's, in the, what's new heaven and new earth? Yeah, can you hold it right there, please? Okay. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. We were discussing the issue here about the new heaven and new earth. And Patrick had just read to us, and I'd like Patrick to read that one more time for us. Isaiah 66, 
20, or Revelation 21. Revelation 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you want verse uh, 2 now? 21, 1, and 2. One and I saw 21. a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, now what will the New Jerusalem, that, uh, in, that's coming on this new heaven and earth, the new heaven and earth is going to be made. Yeah. New Jerusalem is going to be there. What day are we going to worship on, according to Isaiah, now that we understand Isaiah and Revelation going together? From one Sabbath to another. Read it for us. Isaiah 66, verse 23 says, It shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before But me. where is this going to be at? Verse 22 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me. And, right. and is God promised a new heaven and new earth? Yes. Right. And he said the new Jerusalem is going to come down? Yeah. Yep. And he said the people are going to be worshiping on the Sabbath. Amen. All right. Forever so, and ever. Forever and ever. and ever. So the Sabbath is eternal because it's connected to God's law, which is eternal. Amen. Amen. All right. Thy righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. All right. That's Psalms 119, 142. But now let's go a little closer now. Let's just see, according to the history now, we see these issues are developing. We see the climate change. We see the Paris, the encyclical of the papacy. Of, of Pope Francis, is Sunday going to become the day, or maybe we are just a bunch of loony, lunatics <laughs> up here preaching? I'm just telling you like it is, because that's how some people look at us, and some that don't like us at all, they just really criticize and when they want us off the air. Mm. Okay, but God is, but God is still on the throne. Mm. All right, and let me just put and this. And many way. of them, they cannot go against the message; they go against us too. Right. So, <laughs> so I just want to make it very plain to us as we look at this. All right. It goes very carefully with me. I want to share with you what we really see. In. Was there such a thing? Let's go back to just a few years ago, uh, maybe 2016, all right, 2015 and 16. Listen to this. I want to read, I want you to listen. I want to know do people have in their minds an idea about Sunday and that Sunday should be kept holy? Uh, all right, listen and, to this. And that we should make a law to enforce it. And perhaps we may make, make a law enforcing it. Now, because, and now the reason why they want to make laws, not because they're bad people, but because they, they believe that something ought to be done about the immoral state that's taking place in the American society. So I understand that. You know, nobody wants to see society go into decay and in total immorality. Even though they're good people, but we right. read Revelation 16 that it is the spirit of the devils putting that in the mind of good people. Okay, listen carefully. Okay. All right, listen, okay. listen to this one. This, one's, this is from, have, have you heard of, Sen you remember Sylvia, Senator Sylvia Allen? Right, from Arizona. From Arizona. Right. Listen to what she says about, about what they should be discussing in a bill mm. that they were trying to work, deal with in her, in her time, in uh, her, yeah, Arizona. in Arizona over gun control. Right, right. All right, that's what it's based on. Listen to this. Go ahead. It's Channel 3 in Phoenix. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay. Good. Probably we should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday. Oh boy, an Arizona lawmaker raising eyebrows after a surprising statement during a gun debate. Good evening, Arizona. I'm Brandon Lee. And I'm Heather Moore. She is one of the Republican leaders in the state Senate and, of course, no stranger to controversial comments. Dennis Welch is at the Capitol for us with more on what she calls the fading moral code of America. Dennis? Yeah, we're talking about state senator Sylvia Allen, and she thinks the nation. Now, notice something. Sylvia Allen says she 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 said this about we should make maybe we should have a law having people go to church on Sunday because she's concerned about something. She's not a bad person. No, of course not. She's just simply saying that she's concerned about the moral fall that there, or the moral degra the, the degrading of morals in our country, which all of us should be concerned. Yes. All of us. And to the point that she said, maybe we should have a law uh, requiring people to go to church on Sunday. Mm. All right? And this is what Dennis Welch has to say. Yeah, we're talking about State Senator Sylvia Allen, and she thinks the nation is suffering from a moral decay. And the cure for that decay, she believes, is church, and she also believes that there could be, should be a new law forcing people to attend. I believe what's happening to our country is that there's a horrible erosion of the soul of America. Okay, yes, so Senator yes. Sylvia Allen thinks the nation is heading in the wrong direction. But instead of just complaining, the Republican from Snowflake offered up this solution. Probably we should be debating a bill requiring 
every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday. Allen was speaking yesterday in committee and no, she wasn't debating religion. She was debating guns, specifically House Bill 2320. It lets certain gun owners take their weapons into public buildings like libraries and even baseball okay. stadiums. Uh, I but, I, but I wanted everybody to just see that what was on her mind was a bill perhaps requiring people to go to church on Sunday because she felt that if they would, if we would could put back the morals in society, maybe we could have a better issue over gun control and all the rest of the things going on. In the third angel's message, we're warned not to worship the beast. The last verse says, here are they that keep the commandments of God. Worship has to do with the first four commandments. And the only commandment that, that uh, man has ever made laws uh, to promote is the fourth commandment regarding the day of worship. And uh, and so that is what's predicted. And that that has yeah. always been that way. And, and again, uh, I think we should be very clear. We should be promoting, uh, you know, uh, an environment that will be more secure in America. Uh, how can we promote that by bringing the principles of the Bible to follow? We be obedience to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Surrendering our heart, you know, to our creator, to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Not by legislation, but you see, because every time, and we have said this time after time, every time when religion tried to be enforced, more calamities, more chaos, <laughs> more tragedy, it, it will come upon us. So that's all it is. I think I thought mm -hmm. you had another clip. Yes, I have, wanna... another, I have, an, I have okay. another clip I yeah. want to show you. All right, go ahead. All right? And that's going to be this one here because I want you to see with me again. So it's not that we don't want. We don't want peace and safety. It's not that we don't want to uh, uh, see more uh, moral. We can have peace and safety without violating, the, violating the principle of separation. separation of church and state. That's right. Amen. Yeah. You got it. All right. Got it. We've had it before. Way. Yeah, I, I'm just we, trying we, to emphasize that because I know many people are mis under, misinterpreting, you know, what we're trying idea. to say. And uh, we had it before in this history of this country, in the early history of the colonies, mm -hmm. and when the colonists didn't understand that principle, they were not willing to give freedom of religion to all who mm. differ, who may differ with them. Right. As a result, that's why you had Roger Williams form Rhode Island. Right. And uh, again, to bring them back to separation of church and state and also show the importance of liberty of conscience. Amen. All right, but now listen to this one here. Now the Bible says over in the book of James that the merchants go and buy and sell. Mm. That's what you're talking about when we, we read James 4, 13 and when mm. our previous uh, Lecture, oh. previous meetings, mm -hmm. but the Bible said that these merchants are called someone, listen very carefully, the Bible shows that the merchants of the earth will join in with this, in Revelation chapter 15, uh, 18, Revelation chapter 18, mm -hmm. verse 11, the Bible says, and the merchants of the earth, listen very carefully at this, mm -hmm. very carefully, Revelation chapter 18, let's look here, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment is come. Mm. Thy merchants of the merchants, of, and it says, and the merchants of the earth shall weep mm. and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Now they had the merchandise of gold and silver and different things, but notice something else here. It says here in verse 23, it says, and the light of the candles shall no more shine in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be, it shall be no more heard. Shall her, it shall be heard no more in thee. For thy merchants were the what? Great men of earth, for by, this, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Mm. The merchants of the earth are your rich, your elite rich people. But the Bible says they are also the great men of earth. And the Bible foretells that they will be the ones helping to enforce you not being able to buy or sell. They're the 1%. That's the 1%, that's right. <laughs> In fact, but now listen to this. Let's see if the merchants of the earth are connected through their advertising industry. Let's see if okay. they're connected with keeping or having a day of rest. I'll just go ahead. This is from, uh, this is a regular, com this is a commercial. Okay. All right. From the Chrysler Corporation. In a work 
work, work, world. What difference will one day make? The Earth won't alter its course. Cats and dogs will be cats and dogs. Rain will still fall from the sky. So take time for Sunday. Just know that your truck has a little thing for Monday. Take time for what? Sunday. Just remember your truck has a little thing for Monday, but take time for Sunday. So here we have the merchants of the earth subtly through a very subtle message bringing out the importance of a day of rest. Um, as we have to conclude today in our program, we just want to remind you, yes, Sunday will be coming. And it could be, if it would be Sabbath, the seven-day Sabbath, we will try to oppose that to the same thing. But the Bible says that the image of the beast was going to be formed and as we mentioned in previous program, it is our hope and our prayer that the, not the image of the beast, not the, the mark of the beast, but the image of Jesus Christ could be formed in our life. So we can be forming that character that will be making us fit to go to heaven and rejoice forever and ever and ever with our beloved Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior. That's the one that we must follow. God bless you. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today.